I'm Lou Collins and I want to take you through a journey exploring mixed media techniques one at a time, taking just 10 minutes each and really developing your confidence to use these methods independently in your own projects. Today in video number one we're going to be learning how to apply texture paste to a stencil and create a coloured background in just a few simple steps. This is the basis for a lot of my art journal pages and mixed media projects and where I'll start before I add any embellishments. Together we will be creating a library of technique tags to keep and refer back to with a video tutorial for each and every one. So this is video one and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I start to create a base. We're going to do some really simple texture paste through a stencil and work with a little bit of colour adding some detail around the edge and how I fade that out as well creating a focal point for everything else to go on to. It sounds like a lot but when we break it down with everything else we're going to learn throughout this series you're going to be learning so much and it will all come together. So as this is video one, I'm going to be talking you through now how I create the tags. Now these are a watercolour paper. I must admit they're not my best watercolour paper. These are from this pad here, a gold line water studio pad, because you get 100 sheets and I can get four of these tags die cut from one sheet. So I've got lots to work with. Now this is a Creative Craft Products die, but essentially throughout this whole series, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I am simply trying to show you what I've got in my stash, what you could be using alternatives for and teaching you techniques. So when it comes to texture paste, there's lots of them on the market. I'm going to be creating a resist. So I've gone for a texture paste that has a gloss finish. So I know this is kind of going to repel a lot of the color that we're going to be putting down afterwards. Now, later on in the series, we're actually going to be making our own texture pastes as well. So stay tuned for that. I've got myself a palette knife so I can apply my texture paste and this is definitely the easiest way to put it through a stencil. Again, the stencil, I won't go through the brand and the name. You can use any stencils that you have. You could even make your own if you have something like a scan and cut machine or dies that will cut through acetate. Now the colours that I'm going to be using are from the Distress range. So I've got here Uncharted Mariner and Speckled Egg. Essentially I've got a really deep dark colour and I've got a slightly sort of paler version of the same colour. This is how I build up my initial background and then I might go in with a complementary colour later. But again there's going to be a video later on talking about mixing colours, ones which complement each other and ones which accent each other. If you don't have spray stains, another alternative is to take a blank mister or spritzer put some water in it and add your own colour. Now these are watercolour ink, so this is a Distress re for the ink pads. They're great if you put a few droplets into some water. Then I've also got some watercolour ink from Creative Craft Products, that's what's actually in this bottle at the moment. But you could even put a little blob of something like watercolour paint in there and mix it around with some water to create your own spritzes and sprays. Another alternative as well is just simple watercolour paint with a brush if you don't have any misters or spritzers. Now to get the best possible results I do like to try and tack my stencils down. Now I've got an adhesive here, this is a spray adhesive but it's repositionable so it's perfect for my stencil. This just ensures that my paste isn't going to creep under the stencil while I'm working with it. So I give this a quick spray on one side. I tend to do that over my waste paper bin and usually you need to allow about 30 seconds for this to dry and go tacky before you put it onto your tag. Now composition is something else we'll go through in the series but I tend to just out of habit keep all of my focal point of my mixed media projects to one area so usually it's around about this sort of left hand side it's just naturally where I um, sort of attracted to and then everything fades out to almost nothing around these edges so I'm going to do the same here today when I'm doing something like texture paste I don't usually cover the whole project I'll usually go in with only about a third of the project covered with any sort of paste now this texture paste is really quite thin, which means there's even more need for that repositionable glue on my stencil. So that's all tacked down and I'm just going to smooth this down in nice smooth strokes with the side of my palette knife and rather than worrying about exactly where it's going, I'm just lifting my palette knife up 
near the edge and just letting it sort of fade out along the design as long as you're not specifically trying to stencil any particular words then that should be absolutely fine so I scrape the excess off back into my pot as long as it's all clean and put the lid on just be aware with any mediums like this when you do put the lid on that there's no medium around the rim here because otherwise it will be really hard to get the lid off later when that's dried at this point make sure you wipe all of your tools if not wipe go and give them a wash in the sink because that will dry ever so quickly so now time to lift our stencil up so we want to be really careful about just lifting one corner holding everything still and peeling this off without smudging the design again we need to go and wash this straight away otherwise you could have something like a bowl of water next to you that you can just pop it in and that's what I tend to do when I'm doing my mixed media projects so you can see the gloss pattern on there it's really beautiful it's just faded out probably went a bit more than a third I probably went more like a half of the project covered but that's absolutely fine you'll get to see the detail in there now I'm going to take myself a heat tool again there's lots of these on the market this is my favorite one and this is because a lot of the time i am filming videos and this is the quietest heat tool that i have come across this is from ranger and it's called the heat it craft tool there are others that produce a faster and harder heat um, but they are much noisier so this one is a bit more gentle i prefer to use this on my mixed media projects too because it's not that really strong blast of heat it's not going to blow things around and it's not going to burn any of my mediums so I'll hover this around for just a minute or so, not too close, keeping it moving and allow the top of my texture paste to dry off. If you notice that your texture paste is actually starting to bubble, you'll be holding your heat far too close. So pull it away a little bit further and again, make sure the heat gun is moving at all times. So now the texture paste has got a glossy surface, it's dry to the touch. There may be areas underneath that aren't quite dry. I did warm the back of the cardstock there as well, just to try and get that as dry as possible. But essentially you just need that to have that dried sort of skin or film over the top to go on to the next stage. So now I'm going to start getting messy, so I'm going to put a blending mat underneath. Now that was about two minutes in total of drying time. All different texture pastes will dry at different rates and some will prefer heat and some will prefer to air dry. You'll get to know your particular texture paste the more you use it. But this one being a gloss one is a resist. Now you may have one that is not gloss and it will almost hold on to colour rather than resist it. Again we're going to cover that later on when we make our own DIY texture pastes but they will react very differently so it's worth trying lots of different ones to see which effect you like best. Now I'm going to bring in some plain water again in a spritz bottle if possible and I'm going to completely cover my tag with a light mist. This means that when I first spritz my mist down, my spray, my stain, my ink, whatever I'm putting down first, it's not going to instantly be drawn into the paper and absorbed in and effectively stain it. This is going to almost sort of slightly saturate the top of the paper to allow the colour to move a little bit first before it starts soaking in. So a light mist over the top there and then I'm going to come in with my first colour. Now this one has been leaking so I always keep kitchen towel uh, nearby because they do tend to leak, that's just something that happens. So just to mop that up first. Now being a spray stain, there's no mica in this, there's no pigment in this, it's dye based. I don't need to shake it up to mix it so I don't need to worry about that. If you've got for example a distress oxide spray you'll need to shake that to get the pigment moving around in there. Now I'm going to spray this directly in the centre of where I've put my texture paste. Now you notice my tag is warping and bending a bit, that's absolutely fine. That's because I've only sprayed water on one side of it. I could then turn around, spray water on the other side lightly and you'll see, hopefully you'll see that's starting to instantly flatten out. So I'm going to go with my spray just a little bit to start with in the very centre there. Now you can hopefully see that pattern coming through. Then I'm going to go in with a slightly lighter colour and I'm going to do this around the edges. Now you notice we've actually got some quite definite circles of colour there. So now we're going to come back to our water and we're going to go around the edge a third time, a wide edge here. 
effectively covering the rest of the tag, just capturing the edge of the ink there, just like so. And that's going to allow everything to go from really super saturated in the middle to blending out. And I love these lines of colour that we get. Now I'm going to use some kitchen towel because I've got a puddle here. I don't want a puddle. I want everything to move around on the page and absorb nicely around the texture paste. So I'm just going to soak that puddle up. Now I'm not going to do anything else with what's on here. I'm not going to try and move it around or anything. I'm going to either leave that to air dry or I'm again going to take my heat tool and just allow the warm air to dry this off almost naturally, just a little bit faster. Now with the heat tool, when I am doing this, the only thing I do do to try and tease it a little bit to where I want it to be is blow from the outwards in. So the direction of the air is going to always be inwards. So areas like this will kind of get pushed in a little bit more. If you still find you've got a lot of ink sitting in one particular area that you're not so keen on, so I've got some ink has run to this edge, and that's purely because of the warping of the cardstock, sort of directing it down there. There's a little bit of a valley, and the same down here. I can use my kitchen towel just to lift that up a tiny little bit. When you are drying a piece of artwork off, if you can lift it off from your table or your surface, you're going to allow better airflow around it and the moisture will be able to evaporate away much quicker. Now these will appear throughout these series quite a lot. They are silicone handles. I can't remember what they're called. They're definitely from the brand Ranger. They are for embossing, so they just hold your paper or cardstock still if you need to, to make sure that you don't get any heat near your fingers. Now because the particular paste that I was using is transparent, you can see some of the ink underneath the cardstock where it's kind of soaked through. So you can see here some of my texture pattern is actually showing the blue through. Now that's not gone into the texture paste as such, it's actually the paper underneath has absorbed that. I love the distressed look and that suits me perfectly, but if I wanted to clearly be able to see the design from the stencil, I would need to use a white texture paste instead, or just something opaque and solid that's not going to be see-through like this one. So there in just a few short steps, hopefully you have gathered the confidence to be able to create your own mixed media background really quickly. And this is effectively the base for most of my mixed media and art journal pages. Um, this is where I'll start and then I'll carry on and start adding to this. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, just imagine a floral on there, a beautiful butterfly, maybe the addition of some yellows or some oranges, which are contrasting colours. We can really build and do so much with this simple base. Ensure you check out the playlist and make sure there's no other technique tags that you've missed and that we're all up to date. And if you're on Facebook, I'd love it if you could join our group. I'll make sure that's linked in the description below so that you can share your technique tags as well and of course ask any questions, but you are free to ask questions in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video number one. I'll see you again very, very soon for video number two.